Today, we're going over the settings that I feel like is relevant to street photography on the X100V. There's a lot of settings on the Fujifilm X100V. I'm not gonna go over all of them. This is just for the genre of street photography. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right into the menu. So we're going to work our way down from the top. So the first one, we have image quality settings. There's not much to change here. I would personally recommend everyone change raw recording to lossless compressed as I feel like there's no difference between the two and you get the benefit of half the file size if you choose lossless compressed. So it's a no brainer, change it to lossless compressed and your raw files will be so much smaller, saving you so much more space on your SD card. Moving down to AF, MF settings, you have AF mode, you've got three to select from, single point, which I find is really good if you're focusing on subjects that are stationary or static. You have zone AF, which allows you to focus better on moving subjects or subjects that take up a larger portion of your scene. And finally, we have wide tracking, which works well in continuous autofocus mode and it allows you to track your subjects while moving while also panning your camera around as well. So all three have their specific purposes. I recommend if you're shooting in autofocus, choose the one that applies to your shooting style in any given shooting situation. Next up, we have AFC custom settings, which applies to continuous autofocus. I find all of these presets that Fujifilm give you in the camera work very well for the situations that they describe. So I would generally recommend people just use the presets for any given shooting scenario. However, for me personally, I have it set to multi-purpose as I feel like that gets the job done most of the time really, really well. For store AF mode by orientation, if you have it set to on, you can have one AF mode set while you're in horizontal mode and if you flip your camera to vertical mode it will change to single point focus AF. Now if you have it set to focus area only you will be able to have the same focus mode on both horizontal and vertical however you can set different points where you can position the focus box for each respective orientation and it'll save the location of the focus box whenever you turn the camera one way or the other. AF point display I recommend turning this off because if you have it on it will show you all these little squares within the focus box when you're in zone AF or wide tracking. It's kind of distracting so you know I recommend setting it to off. Number of focus points. Now this only applies when you have your AF mode set to single point. Um, you can select 425 if you're in single AF and you're in single shot mode. And that will give you a more precise focusing on all the areas of the scene. However, most of the time uh, it's set to 117 and that works just as well. So I would recommend just having it set to 117 unless you are really, really specific on your focusing. Pre-AF, definitely set this to off and keep it on off because it will just burn through your batteries because as soon as you turn the camera on, if you have pre-AF set to on, it will constantly try to acquire focus on every little thing. So don't have this set to on. AF Illuminator, have this set to off as well because if you're in a dim environment and you try to acquire focus, the camera, there's a light in front of the X100V that'll light up to illuminate the subject so the camera can acquire focus. And you don't really want that because it won't make you very discreet at all. Face eye detection settings, you have a few settings to choose from, but I would recommend as a street photographer just to either choose eye off, which is face tracking, or eye auto for you know letting the camera decide which eye it wants to focus on. Um, if you choose right eye priority or left eye priority, I would only choose that if you're a street portrait photographer and you can take your time to really decide which eye you want to focus on. But you know, generally speaking, you'd want this set to, you know, eye off, ideally, because all you care about is getting the face in focus. Eyes, not so much, unless they're really up close and you really want to nail those eyes. 
AF plus MF relates to autofocus shooting modes. If you have this set to on, when you have your shutter button half pressed and you rotate the focus ring, you will be able to manually focus as long as you have your finger half pressed on the shutter button. And then when you fully depress the shutter button, it will take the shot after you've manually focused. If you release the shutter button while you half press it, then it'll just reset. MF Assist will allow you to see better when you're manually focusing. It'll give you a, more of an assistance. Usually I have it set to focus peak highlight, which personally I think is the best way to focus on a Fujifilm camera. You have the option of selecting the color and the intensity of the focus, and it'll just give you a, an outline on the things that are in focus on the, in the scene. If you're shooting in manual shooting mode, you have extra options such as digital split image, and you can choose between monochrome and color, and it'll just show you a patch in the center of your camera, kind of like the kind of patch that you'd see on an analog rangefinder. And you have digital micro prism, which you can also see in certain analog SLR cameras. So it kind of replicates that, but I find that focus peak highlight works the best in every single situation. Focus check. Now this applies to manual focusing only. If you have it set to on, whatever your focus box was on the scene, by turning the uh, focus ring, it will automatically zoom in to that position where your focus box is, so you have a better, more precise focusing uh, option. For interlock spot AE and focus area, this applies when you have your AF mode set to single point. And when you're pointing the camera at a scene and you move the focus box around, wherever the focus box lands, the camera will try to expose for that area. And if you have it set to off, wherever your focus box is originally, if you move the focus box around, it will not expose for the change in the focus box position. It will just keep the exposure for where the focus box was. So set it to whatever you feel like applies to your situation the best. For instant AF setting, this applies to manual shooting mode. I have it set to AFS, which means if I press the back button, the AEL AFL button, it will acquire focus once. If you have it set to AFC, if you hold down the AEL AFL button, it will constantly grab focus on whatever you're pointing the focus box to. Depth of field scale is something that a lot of people get confused over. Put it simply, Pixel basis will show you the distance range where everything is going to be in focus and film format basis will show the focus range where things will be perceived to be in focus. What I mean by perceived is say you have a large print of a photograph. There are some things on that photograph that you may think is in focus, but when in actual fact, it wasn't actually in focus, but your eyes plays tricks on you and it, it makes you think that it's in focus. So if sharpness is not an object for you when it comes to street photography, I recommend film format basis. But if you're very OCD and you really desire that sharpness, then pixel basis works better for you. So choose whichever one you feel works best for you. So for release focus priority, I have both of these set to release. Now the difference between release and focus is if you have it set to focus, if you fully depress the shutter button, the camera will still try to acquire focus where the focus box was positioned and then take the shot. If you have it set to release, if you fully depress the shutter button, then the camera will just take the photo regardless of whether or not it has acquired focus. So I recommend setting it to release for street photographers simply because you don't really want to miss a shot. It's better to get a shot than to miss the opportunity entirely and you know miss out on an opportunity that could have been a great shot, even if it wasn't in focus. So for AF range limiter, this will pretty much tell the camera to focus within a certain distance range. So for example, if I mainly shoot subjects that are 50 centimeters to 1.5 meters away from me, then I would set the camera to 0.5 to 1.5 meters, and that'll tell the camera to only focus within this range. 
So AF range limiter pretty much tells the camera to focus, autofocus within a certain distance range. So for example, if I specifically shoot subjects that are one meters to two meters away from me, then I would set the AF range limiter to one to two meters. Then that will tell the camera, yes, only focus within that range. And not only does that speed things up for the autofocus, it doesn't have to work that hard. It means that you'll consistently get shots that have the subject matter within those range. And outside of that range, the camera doesn't even bother focusing on those things. So it's great in certain situations, but always remember to turn it off when you're not using it. Otherwise, if you find that there's something out in the distance that you want to take a focus of, if you forget to turn off the AF range limiter, then you're going to find that the camera doesn't want to focus on those things, which will make you confused for a second until you realize you had the setting on. So keep that in mind when you're shooting, always turn it off when you don't need it. I also want to mention that the AF range limiter will not work if you have the face eye detection settings turned on. You have to make sure that it's off in order to utilize AF range limiter because face eye detection will override this function. So for touch screen mode, you have a few options and this applies to when you tap on the screen with your finger to shoot. So first you have touch shooting, which when you press a certain area of the screen, the camera will acquire will move the focus box to that area, it will acquire focus and it will take the photo uh, with just one press of the finger. AF will move the focus box to the area where you pressed with your finger and it will acquire focus but it will not take the shot. And area will move the focus box to the area where your fingers touched but it will not acquire focus and it will not take the shot. So select which one works for you. I have it set to off because I don't really use this function too much but if you do, the option is there. Next up, we're going to go into shooting settings and there's only a few settings that I want to talk about. First one being photometry. Keep in mind, photometry will not work if you have face eye detection settings turned on. Again, it will override photometry, um, but you have a few options and the ones that I recommend using are multi and spot. Uh, multi pretty much lets the camera decide which photometry mode um, works best for the given situation and spot will give you a more precise um, control over where you want the camera to expose for. The other two don't really work as well and I find the camera is smart enough in most situations so having it set to multi will work the best and if you want to be more accurate choose spot. Next one is shutter type and I recommend on the X100V to just have the shutter set to mechanical and electronic. If you were using a mechanical focal plane shutter Fujifilm camera, uh, I could see the reasoning behind using the electronic shutter because the electronic shutter doesn't make any noise at all. But on the X100V, since the camera has a leaf shutter, mechanical shutters are very quiet anyway so it makes no sense to shoot on electronic if you don't have to so highly recommend setting it just to mechanical plus electronic so it can switch between the two seamlessly by itself i'm going to skip the flash and the movie settings because i feel like most people don't shoot with these settings however if you are utilizing flash uh, i just generally recommend shooting in TTL mode and let the camera you know adjust the exposure for itself. We're going to move straight down to setup and the first one we're going to go under is sound setup. This is really important especially the AF beep volume and the shutter volume. AF beep volume is pretty much the sound it makes whenever the camera acquires focus. You don't want that when you're doing street photography because obviously you don't want to be noticed or you don't want to be found out that you're taking a photo of someone. And shutter volume uh, applies when you are shooting in electronic shutter mode and it will give you a electronic fake shutter noise just as a register to let you know that the camera took the shot because of you know, the complete silence that electronic shutter has. Self timer beep volume and operation volume is highly personal you can either turn it off or you can have it set to a small amount just to you know, give you some sort of feedback when you're using those options. And playback volume only applies to movie mode, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Next is screen setup. 
you want to make sure image display is set to off because if you have it on anything other than off every time you take a photo the camera will show the photo on the screen for a certain duration of time and that kind of ruins the shooting experience when you're out on the street and if you're taking photos in succession from each other then it kind of gets a little bit annoying when the camera keeps showing you the images that you last took before you can take the next shot so definitely turn it off the next is focus scale units you definitely want to have this set to the measurement of your choice because that will affect the focus distance scale on your camera and you know you, you could get it mixed up if you have it set to one or the other definitely shoot with the measurement of your preference now the last one that i want to talk about is the large indicators mode i recommend setting this to off because if you have large indicators mode set to on what happens is you lose the focus distance scale on the camera so if you are someone who relies on the focus distance scale then you definitely want this set to off otherwise you won't be able to see what distance or what range that you're shooting in next we go to button dial settings um, there's not a lot that i want to cover in this because everyone has their own personal preferences but i will like to talk about the focus lever settings i have it set to on uh, but that's personal preference. I know a lot of people who don't like the fact that it's uh, on all the time because they bump it with their hand and, you know, when it comes to shooting, they realize that their focus box has moved because they accidentally bumped the uh, joystick. So a lot of people set it to push to unlock. So what that does is if you're operating the camera, if you try to move the joystick around, the focus box will not move. The only way to move the focus box is to press down on the joystick first and then you have the option of moving the focus box around. Choose what works best for you. I have it set to on because I don't really worry about that stuff too much, but you know, everyone's different. And so choose what works best for you. And the other thing that I wanna talk about that a lot of people get confused or frustrated over is the command dial settings. Now I've made a previous video on this, but I forgot to mention it. But if you have command dial settings set, to you know either the front or the rear command dial to control aperture you need to also change the setting further down which is aperture ring settings now by default it's set to auto which means if you change the aperture to a this will let the camera automatically control the aperture however if you want to use the front command dial or the rear command dial to control aperture you need to set it to command so when you turn the aperture ring to a this will tell the camera to oh i'm gonna let you control the aperture you can control the aperture using the front or rear command dial so remember if you want to utilize the front and rear command dials set this to command now the last feature that I want to talk about is the touchscreen settings. Now since the X100V doesn't have a four-way command dial like some of the older Fujifilm cameras, it utilizes the four-way swipe functionality. And in order to use this function, not only do you need to have touch function set to on, but you need to make sure that the touch screen settings are set to on as well. If you have touch screen settings set to off, you can't use the touch functionality on this LCD screen at all for any of the features that rely on touch settings. So you need to turn this on in order for all the other settings to work. So keep that in mind. I know it's a little bit of a hassle because by turning the touch screen settings on, you're also turning on the touch shooting mode as well. And if you have it set to anything other than off, if you touch the screen and you know, if the camera doesn't register your swipe and registers as a touch by accident, then you're, you're gonna touch the screen and it's gonna take a photo randomly and you won't know why. So that's kind of a thing that I wish Fujifilm would change in a future firmware update. But for now, you just have to deal with it. You just need to be aware that this thing exists, that this issue exists. So that wraps up all the settings that I feel are relevant for street photography on the X100V. I hope this answers a lot of the questions that you may have had or you may have trouble finding. And if there are any other issues, leave them in the comment section below and I'll see if I can answer them directly or make a separate video out of it in the future. So thanks for watching guys and until next time.